Good morning. This is the April 13th, 2017 reuse uh, City of Northampton Reuse Committee meeting. Uh, hello, everyone. And has everyone had a chance to go over the minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, we were going to uh, talk with Donna first and okay. do the minutes second right. so that Donna can duck out of here. So I want to introduce Donna Lascalia. Did I pronounce that right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> 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 say, say, you say it. Lascalia. Lascalia. Okay. okay. And um, you met her briefly. I think she um, came in to a meeting when she first was on board, but we haven't had a chance to have her sit and talk with us for a few minutes. So here's our opportunity. And Donna, take it away. Yeah, away. I think it, I, I've been here. Uh, about a year now, so um, I've enjoyed the opportunity to become more familiar with the operations of the DPW as a whole, but in particular, um, I've really enjoyed working with Susan to see kind of the evolution of um, her part of the operation, and it's with the support of you folks, so I, I, I do appreciate the effort of all of you for what I see the three centers become and I, I go out to the landfill occasionally I know I went out there when I first started mm -hmm. um, but just for other operational reasons you know going out there and then just kind of hearing you know how people are very impressed with the operation that you folks have put together um, it makes me feel really good about the work that you're doing and so please um, accept my congratulations and my my gratitude for all of your hard work. It, you know, I think it, I think it makes a big difference. And I, I went to Middlebury College in the uh, in the mm -hmm. early '90s, and I was from down. I grew up in downtown Boston, in one of the neighborhoods. And when I went to Middlebury, it was the first time I'd ever seen recycling. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they had like that's heartbreaking. You know, yeah, you know, they had like bins, you know, in the dorms. You know, put your paper in or you know mix out your bottles. I mean, it was just not something that I had really been exposed to until I had that experience. Wow. And so, you know, obviously, or maybe I lived a little bit of a sheltered life, but I have a lot of respect for the work that all of you do to, to try to keep, um, you know, things out of the landfill. So I, I think you do excellent work. And I, I appreciate, you know, Susan's Susan's and my relationship is is that she advises me on the direction that you know solid waste operations it, to make solid waste operations more efficient I would say so you know what can we do to to just kind of strengthen the the overall state of the operations and that's a very important role that Susan plays for the DPW so when I when I think of what is the role of this committee what I'm looking for from you folks is to help Susan help the DPW and, and me to make good decisions about what you folks are doing or what, you, what ideas you have or what we can possibly implement within our budget. So, it, you know, obviously we don't have unlimited resources, um, but, but the work you do is good and it's important that we support it. You know, from the DPW and from the city. So, um, you know, that's kind of what when I think about, it, you know, like why am I here? What sort of involvement do I want to have with this committee? I, I would like to attend your meetings, you know, on a, a, more than once a year. Um, so, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to be here more often to just kind of hear what you folks are doing. Uh, but, but I'm also looking for ideas. I'm looking for you to advise Susan on how we can strengthen our operation in any way that you see possible. You know, obviously within our constraints, understanding that we do have constraints that we have to work with. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of just a, a, a general uh, overview of... And what's your job in the city? I'm the director. The okay. director. Oh, okay. Very misunderstood. My bad. Boy, do I feel like a clone. Well, especially for the <laughs> okay. folks watching this. Okay. All right. No, it's a All right. Very nice. Very nice to meet you. So Can I? I just. I have a question. I don't know if um, a group like yours has a a mission statement, but if you, what, if you could sum it up. I mean, I think you did some of that here, but if you're going to sum up what your job is. 
the DPW overall for the city um, or the goals? Is there any way you could sum that up in a... What my job is as the Director of Public Works, you know? Well, what the, what the mission. DPW... What the mission of the DPW If there's a mission is. of the DPW, I don't know if you could sure, call a mission statement, yeah, but... It's, it's, yeah. it's to provide critical services to the residents of the city and to build and maintain infrastructure as permanent. Okay. It's a huge job. <laughs> so that's pretty broad. That's it's, right. it's, it's a massive, massive <coughs> operation that, that, you know, a lot of people... Uh, is invisible Take for granted. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's invisible to a lot of people and it encompasses, you know, everything from the water you're drinking to the roads you're driving on to the trees that are, you know. And the potholes. Yeah. You, you, right. yeah. you cover a lot of ground. We cover a lot of ground. Get the pun? He's our poster. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> 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 I told you. you <laughs> He'll keep okay. you on your toes. Yeah. No, that's yeah. good. I appreciate so that. Add a little bit to what David said. Um, it wasn't the DPW's job until after the landfill was going to be closed. It was Department of Sanitation or whatever. Uh, what what, what, what wasn't department. their job? Health Peter. Well, what Health Department oversaw the, trash the landfill, and, yeah. and whatever recycling went on. I don't know how much went Until on. around 2000, I think it was. Yeah, a oh, little, okay. little bit after that. So um, it wasn't yeah. always a natural, other than you have lots of equipment, but it wasn't always a natural that the DPW was the most um, critical for evolving uh, recycling, reuse, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So th that's a question that I have always, you know, how, how to best manage recycling, reuse, et cetera, so that it's um, so that it's not a burden on the DPW, but you can you can help it happen. So, and I've got some other ideas about that, but not now. Yeah, I, I don't see it as a burden on the DPW at all. I see it as a very natural fit. We have, mm. you know, the, the personnel and we have the equipment and, you know, we, we are able to accomplish that which needs to be accomplished. But I'm certainly always looking for any idea uh, that anybody has to increase efficiency mm. in any way that we can. So I'm, th I'm thinking of the, the previous uh, DPW folks, I, I always thought it was an addenda to what they really wanted to do, which was engineering roads and bridges and stuff like that, and the, that was something that had been put on their plate, <clears throat> and I wasn't sure how much real commitment there was. Well, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I, I guess I disagree, I don't think it was a commitment issue, it was more of a resource issue. I mean, there's, there's a lot of other important things that are competing for mm -hmm. people's time and attention, and um, you know, safe drinking water and sewers and preventing flooding in the streets is mm -hmm. it's just going to naturally be a higher priority. So yeah, no. it was more of a priority yeah. thing, perhaps, that, that I, I, you know, if anything, that I felt that yeah. we were in, um, realistically, we were a lower priority than some of the other things that the department I think that, that, that is my perspective. Mm -hmm. Fr from where I sit, and, and since I've been here, it, you know, I, I always tell folks the, the things that happened, you know, years ago or the feelings that were felt years ago um, belong in the years ago. Mm -hmm. And we, we move forward um, in a way where we recognize that all things are important and we have to uh, respect that it's necessary for us to pay to pay attention to everything, and that's how I try to run the department. And I hope that people feel that way. And it, I, I would never, you know, marginalize one thing over another thing. Um, so, it, you know, in terms of competing priorities, I think in any job you're always going to have competing priorities, and and it is what it is, and, and you just have to go with it. But that doesn't mean that we want to marginalize uh, any sure. one thing or, or any group of people, and I feel very strongly about that, and, and I think that, you know, there's sort of quantifiable evidence to, to support that that's not how we operate here. Great. So I, I, I guess I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I would ask you folks to let me know what you would like from me, you know, if you if you would like uh, updates about DPW operations as a whole, or if you would, you know, if you would find some benefit in, in kind of hearing about, you know, what we're doing kind of outside of 
of solid-waste operations or if, you, you know, just what you're looking for from me and how I can support you because I'm, I'm very willing to, to work with you folks and, and just to tell me what you need from me and I'm, I'm happy to, you know, to the extent possible to, to work with all of you. Um, you know, I would say that we have some big ideas that go beyond uh, sweeping mouse poop and uh, <laughs> cleaning out dust bunnies and uh, that go all the way to a resource recovery park and it would be great to have uh, appointments, you know, the opportunity to have appointments with you to present some really big picture ideas to, to get your feedback and see what the reality is of um, a, Peter in particular is doing a lot of hard work and research and has some great ideas so that would be it you know uh, to be able to to have an audience for some of these ideas absolutely I'm I'm completely available for whatever you folks would for whatever for whatever you feel can be a benefit to you I, I will be available and that's you know I will never make promises that I can't keep obviously I, I have constraints that that I work within, like all of us do. But I'm I'm completely open to to anything that you folks might put forward, and I will be available for it. Great, Peter, get your calendar I'm out. Just, and we'll well, set I, up no, <laughs> I just want to um, I I want to uh, point point out that at, we're a committee, and mm -hmm. so as a committee, we need to make sure that we all support and agree mm -hmm. with certain ideas. So so I want to be clear about if it's one person's idea who happens to be on the committee and wants to go to talk to Donna by themselves, that's one thing. If it's a committee idea, we need to talk about it as a committee and vet it as a committee, make sure that the consensus of the committee is that we support this and then go to Donna. So there's a difference. So, so it, you know, if, if you, I just wanted to yeah, it, yeah that, that's yeah. fine. That and, and again, you know, I look at you folks as, as an advisory committee. So, you know, please advise Susan or advise the DPW, you know, Susan as the representative of the DPW about the direction that you folks feel that things need to move in or ideas that you have that, that we could possibly successfully implement. And that's that's kind of the key is, you know, adv advise us and right. we'll see what, what we can make of it. Well, I think one important, nothing against Brattleboro, but Northampton <laughs> has, <laughs> has like the prime audience oh, sure. for what we're, we're doing. And so we can actually, I believe, show not just the state, but we can really um, pioneer this. I, I don't want to go with Westernist, I want to go pioneer this. Yeah. Because I think there's lots of opportunities. Yeah, respect. and I've said that to you many times. I feel that that we have an incredible opportunity here, and and with the dedication that I, I think is in this room and the passion that's in this room, I, I, I think that there's tremendous opportunity. So I I completely support it, and and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to be here. I was also thinking that uh, one of the problems is is as our scope enlarges in the committee, number of committee members doesn't. If there's only so much physical time and energy we have to do all the projects that we have in mind. And uh, so the work of the committee isn't always the work of the committee. So interfacing with the, the city would be great if we can tap resources, not just resources, but people, to start organizing and helping and <coughs> contributing to all these different ideas that we have. You know, in addition to the volunteers that we're, we're gathering and trying to get going, it'd be nice to have a, another place to help enlarge the scope of what we do. We've had that to some extent with yeah. our pop-up events. We've had the DPW sure. drivers with the roll-offs and mm -hmm. Deb has helped them out. Sure. Them out. Kind of yeah. And mm -hmm. the gatekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. But if we're going to do a whole resource park, that, right. yeah. that's, Just that's, that's but, it, but when you it's, say we, it's been a collaborative as, that's, as a resource that's committee. A, well, but it's not, it wouldn't be our resource park, it would be the DPW's resource park. So we need to uh, this is the, we need to come up with a concept, I'm sure. do the research, and sell it to Donna and the mayor as this is this is what needs to happen. <coughs> so I'm just saying that kind of thing it doesn't right. have to be that thing specifically. Right. Yeah, and that's it. That's something I'm very open to. You know, where uh, you know, as the DPW, we obviously have a lot of resources. You know, so let's see how we can best use them to support you know whatever I advice that you folks would bring forward. Thank you for coming. Yes, I thank all of you. Um.
for, for your time and, and attention. So thank you. And thank you. And thank you for your contributions. Can I just ask one other question? Because um, I think I remember reading the paper when you came on board. But what were you doing before? What was your, before you came on as the director? I, I ran mm -hmm. operations for Green Mountain Power in the southern part of the world. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. All right, minutes. Did, did everyone get yeah. copies of the minutes here? Uh, motion to approve minutes as amended by Susan. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Yeah. Any blocking concerns? New revelations about edits? All right, let's move on to the recenter report. How was opening day? Well, okay, it was great, but just to, to back up a little bit, um, two weeks before opening day, we had our clean-out day, which was well attended, uh, and we really gave the place pretty much top-to-bottom cleaning. It looked terrific when we were done, uh, and, you know, there were probably half a dozen people roughly out there, and uh, we spent, you know, pretty much, well, probably from about 9 to 12 or so, and, and we got it in great shape. Um, took took the remaining stuff out and cleaned everything up and then put it back in. So that went really well. Then the following weekend we were supposed to have our training but the weather was pretty bad so we canceled that um, and so we are moving forward with training on the job basically as new people come in we'll just train them as we go along. And then we had opening day last Saturday. Um, I think it went very well. It was um, also we had plenty of volunteers, and we we did about five hundred uh, between five and six hundred pounds turnover of stuff the first day, which was kind of was kind of a moderate sized <laughs> turnout in terms of um, customers coming in. But that was good for the first day. We didn't I I didn't want to be overwhelmed myself. So that went really well. Um, How many people? And, <coughs> do you know roughly? Um, I know I was up to at least twenty-six on the list. Yeah. So okay. Six right. Outgoing, outgoing right. at least people, and then we might have. Yeah. yeah so it was you know last so. year it was typically more like forty or fifty, so it was lower than yeah. than it will day. be, but it was good. Um, our our new uh, we have two new workers from the city property tax. Uh, situation. Dennis was there Saturday and was very helpful and also did a lot of observing about how we were, uh, what the procedures are and um, you know I think he'll get up to speed pretty quickly. Um, and Diana did a huge amount of work in the in the annex. Um, the annex is, I would say it's pretty full right now. Um, so I think we have to be a little bit careful about um, accepting big stuff because there's a limited amount of room there left at this point. Um, but it's very tidy. <laughs> and well, I could use so some little more. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some more on there on Primarily Wednesday. Primarily, what I was doing was putting all of our things into a one area instead of having it spread out so that we we could be clearer about what's not for grabs. Right. Right. Um, and then um, yesterday, I was out there with the Wednesday crew, which consists of um, Andrea and Elaine from last year, and now Sandy, who is from the property tax abatement program. Mm -hmm. And the four of us worked for the morning and, again, did, did more tidying up and reorganizing. And it, the place looked great when we were done. It's a gorgeous day. And yeah, it was a great yeah, day. Nice. And that's not currently on the on the weekly sign up thing. And I don't think it really needs <coughs> to be because it's going to be essentially the same group that is coming on Wednesdays. And we we don't really need more, I don't think, than that. And we can communicate among ourselves with email if one of us isn't going to be around or something. So I think that's fine that it's not on the sign up genius. Um let's see what else. Um we get a lot of stuff filling up the shelves. Uh, the, it's amazing how quickly it fills yeah. back up. I mean, the shelves aren't full, 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 but they're they're quite respectably. There's quite a respectable amount of material. So I, again, it was a confirmation to me that even if you're starting on a Saturday morning with almost nothing, you can be pretty sure that by the end of the day, the shelves are going to be pretty full. Um, so um, yeah, I think that's. Um, 
that's that's all I can think of at the moment. Um, I, a little reminder to I'm going to remind people as we uh, go continue in the season. People who are doing intake, there were a couple of pieces of furniture that came in Saturday that sort of looked okay superficially, but when we were looking them over yesterday, we found out there were mm. you know there were problems with them and stuff. So just again a reminder to anybody that's doing intake to really. Um, if if you can take take a look at something, wiggle it around, turn it upside down, you know. Were see. the fees paid on those items? No, I don't think so. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but that that always happens to some extent. Um, it's kind of unavoidable, especially when there's a lot of people waiting to bring stuff mm -hmm. in. You have to take a kind of quick look at it. But mm -hmm. just you know, it, it, we want to just keep sharpening our intake sure. skills that way. And and any kind of heavy furniture item, if it's not metal, the fir your first thought should be, wow, a fee sh should probably be paid on that. And then you can convince yourself that it doesn't, as you look at it and it's in excellent condition, <laughs> you know, then, 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 then you can convince yourself, but your first, I would really encourage people who do intake for your first thought for a heavy piece of non-metal furniture is, that's a fee paid item, and, and, and work from there. I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Because yeah. that's, that's even if it's in good shape, it takes a long time mm -hmm. for a lot of those things to move because people just don't come out with a vehicle that can take them away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Can I just make a couple comments? Mm -hmm. thing there? Um, I was <coughs> amazed at how many things that came in that went out right away. <laughs> I was, that's, that's what awed me, I mean, because I, I was working um, mainly the, the coming out. Um, That's the rule of 15 minutes, Barbara. The rule is, if it doesn't go in the first 15 minutes, it'll probably be there for 15 weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> stuff does move I mean, quickly that it's going to move. Yeah, it was, it was, that was impressive, like that. It was also fun. Yeah, it is. It's a great group of people. And people leave some really nice things that people took, you know, it's good to see. So, I, I just wanted to... Just very quickly, what was wrong with the furniture that wasn't apparent? You're coming out Saturday, right? <laughs> yeah. I'll show you. Sure. <laughs> Good. I just wanted to bring up the email that I sent out. <coughs> I wanted you guys to know that that is a thought that, that came up and that um, Facebook, as fabulous as it is, I mean, some of the posts that I have recently posted have reached 3,000 people, um, and many of them have reached 1,000 or more people. So, so it, it, our reach is great, but one of the risks with Facebook is that you also invite <laughs> comments like that, and it... Um, recap? Recap, recap of, of the what are you talking comment? About? Facebook. Uh, there was a woman that said... Why would I bring? Why would I pay oh, to bring yeah. things to your place when I can get rid of them for free at uh, via Craigslist and stuff like that? So, so I just I, um, I, I'm going to answer her, and I will copy you guys on my answer. But I just wanted you guys to know and to kind of collect your thoughts and um, find out if there's some more ammunition that I can uh, very kindly send her way. I'm going to keep it very short and sweet. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't see that as an adversarial question. No, I don't. I don't either. But 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 that you one's first reaction is defensiveness, you know. Okay. Um, but but no, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a question yeah, to mull over, which is why I sent it to you guys. Mm -hmm. So, Craigslist isn't um, recycle isn't just putting it on and then it goes. You know, somebody's got to come to the house to look right. at it. So here That's here's. Right. <clears throat> um, a collection area mm -hmm. that you can bring stuff to right. that's reusable distinctly so. I had four people express interest people. in the art crates that I posted on FreeCycle and after dealing <laughs> with them, each, each four of them, one after the other, um, on on email <coughs> and sending them pictures or whatever, <laughs> none of them the took it. So I invested, right. you know, more than an hour of time trying to give something away for free. At the recenter, uh, I'm keeping the choir. At the recenter, you can drop it off if it's something that we can take. You're done with it, you know. You right. drop it off. And you're done. But there's also just bring up the opportunity of what's there while you're there. Right. Sure. I mean, you might be very. I was very surprised at things there. So it, it gives you the opportunity to um, find that new stereo that I didn't have. Yeah. And to break the vow of not bringing anything else back home. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to capture your thought of being amazed at the amount of stuff that doesn't mm. even stay. And and what was it? Your 15 minute the rule of 15. Yeah, I like that. It was, I saw that in action. Rule of 15. Sometimes it doesn't even get off the. Uh, That's right. Oh, get we had. Shelf. Sometimes it doesn't get out of the car. Yeah. So you said uh, it, if it doesn't leave in 15 minutes, it's what? 15, 15 weeks. 15 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Until Mac decides to get rid of it. <laughs> oh, well, I hope not. It's okay. yeah, no, not, not quite, but it's, it's, close. it's a rule. Which yeah. reminds so, me, do, mm -hmm. our gun with the stickers, is that? I oh. have, uh, we have ordered a, a roller. Ironically, the place that the city orders through that ordered the gun a year ago does not carry the series 1500 <laughs> ink rollers <laughs> and Deb said we just bought it last year so we had to do a little <laughs> research to find it we're going to look at um, purchasing more but I wanted to make sure the shelf life of the ink roller was more than right. you know if we only go through one a year I'm not going to buy two if um, can you drop ink onto it I meant to do that you mean just try to re-ink it? Yeah. Yeah, we can try that. What is this item? I didn't it's, a, it's a thing that we use to date items when they come oh, into right. the I saw the date. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can we solve thing. this outside of the meeting? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was, no, it was just kind of a um, funny, funny thing that I thought. Humorous moment. <laughs> of Any other thoughts, Mike? Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Pop-up events. Pop-up events. Anyone want to talk about the spelling bee? Hmm. I would like to write up something about the spelling bee for future use because mm -hmm. uh, Mac wasn't there able to go and so I was sort of the only person that had done it before but I hadn't set it up before and I found that we needed to move as the event went on. We had set up in a place that was just in the dark and crowded but people were standing by the their food. backs up against us. By the food concession um, that we were the initially? The food was okay, that one, but I had set up another one inside and I had set it up by the wall as, as you enter the hall and people just kept lining up with their backs to the bins mm -hmm. and blocking mm -hmm. the bins. Yeah, I usually back. set it up by the food in the back. <coughs> we, we had two. Yeah, I moved back. over to a different yeah. spot. Yeah. Uh -huh. So anyway, I'd just like to write up some of the things That'd that we learned. That'd be great. And we ended up with a lot of plastic bags. Um, because we had lined all of the containers with plastic bags and they didn't fill. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like there's another solution to that. We mm -hmm. only had one compostable bag. Yeah. Which was all we needed actually for the mm -hmm. compost. Good. But um, yeah, we just need to think about how to deal with the recycling. And mm -hmm. They had recycling. It was We had to hide their trash bin because mm -hmm. the people were using it. So yeah. there are just some things I'd like to recap. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yes, one to comment because um, we were in different rooms. Um, it was a real learning curve. I mean, people were right away were throwing out um, plastic um, spoons and stuff. And I think if one thing is, is like at the serving table, we could have even said, we should have said these are compostable. Yeah. So Alan and I were there and we almost every one we had to show them the things. Right. But so it was a real learning experience yeah. for us also. But the you had to have you had to have at least the three people um, to be there. It was also a, a a real opportunity to reach a group that we don't generally touch. It was people who were not interested in recycling necessarily. They were right. there for the spelling bee, and they're a whole different mm -hmm. audience. And mm -hmm. we should have had more materials about what we do generally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So beside the the uh, plastic uh, cutlery. We probably it shouldn't go into it too much more. Yeah. It was just a recap. Mm -hmm. but so, but most people have to be shown. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. no different, frankly, at the strawberry festival. Yeah, I put. I actually put <laughs> the actual items up on the signs. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> but it's still, yeah, they, yeah. People don't want to look at it that much. Right. They were distracted by the event. You know, they they just can't be bothered. Yeah. Well, I, I think that it, uh, my experience with events are people are kind of in vacation mode, especially right. in a, with a fun event. They they don't want to think. You know, right. it's not it's not even conscious. It's just they've got other they they're they're in this different mode. Well, they're it wasn't it wasn't part of their contract when they went to the event <laughs> to have to <coughs> figure out compo you know separation. We're asking one yeah. more thing. Of yeah. Them. Yeah. I do have a question. Did we mention, was someone came to me and said, oh, I heard you were going to be here. Did we have anything 
John okay. John has a relationship with the organizers, and he might have. Okay, because I was surprised something, but I was surprised that. And that I was think nice. last year they they, so they maybe gave us a shout out okay. somewhere in the paper or in a in a post or something. Else. Also, Cooper's who does the catering always knows that we're going to be there because we speak to them in advance of the event. Okay. Generally, I don't know if we did this year, but mm -hmm. uh, usually there's some coordination with them before the event to yeah, find out what they're bringing, right. what's compostable, what's recyclable. <laughs> that we know. Well, Harold's couldn't deal with compostable stuff. <laughs> they, they didn't uh, do it last year either. And that again, that's something that needs to be dealt with ahead of time. Because they won't do it unless we encourage them to. Well, there's two things we can do for that. One is to put it in the advertising. So this is a you know, reusable, re recyclable. A zero event. waste event. A zero yes. waste event. And the other is maybe an announcement could be made at the very beginning. You that's know, nice someone idea. could just stand up and say, don't right. throw these out. Yeah. It's good. yeah, so that's yeah, something that, 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 to, that we can pass along to John. It'll always be a challenge. And that uh, spelling bee is the ultimate recy reuse, reusing event because we're constantly reusing letters. And words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good point. So I'm going to move into the rally. Uh, John uh, obviously is not here right now, but he is on it. And as am I, we have updated the flyers and handouts. I have these. If you guys uh, go anywhere where you'd like to leave a stack, help yourselves. I also have some posters. Um, we're going to send out a press release about it soon, but John has been in touch with all of the, um, I already put one up in the library, David. Um, I, John's been in touch with all of the people who are going to be there, Bikes Not Bombs, etc. Um, we're in really good shape. He would like, he says he's, he's recruiting uh, high school students, but he has a concern because of the recenter being open about being able to get enough adult volunteers. And he said, really, we had a lot of volunteers last in the fall, and we needed them. So he's, he's <coughs> thinking that uh, about 10 adult volunteers, uh, hopefully. And um, is, is there anyone here that's volunteering for the May sixth event. I will be there. I will. I will most likely. I have to. I have to. Maybe leave before <coughs> noon, but I'm. I'm volunteer. Oh yeah, you, you'll. You can get out of there before noon easily. Yeah. Because I have to be somewhere. Out? I mean, David, can you help out? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. That'd be okay. great. Okay. Thank you. I'll check my schedule. Have these changed appreciably? I haven't been for a couple of years. Have these no. changed appreciably? It's very similar um, in terms of how the traffic flow goes. That's a little different. Uh, that's gotten much better. <coughs> Uh, some of the things that we're taking are different. Uh, what month? This is the spring, so we don't do pumpkins. What? Oh, we do the pellet bag. So, uh, you know, it's semi-annual. So we do pumpkin composting in the fall, and then we do pellet bags in the spring. We always have styrofoam, bicycles most of the time, document shredding, always. So, uh, you know, we set it's it's similar, Roger. We set stuff up on the lawn. People come and camp out, and they they take things. Sure. It was our first recent. <coughs> and I do have more posters here well, if, yeah. if you want. Uh, if now, simultaneously, like a member in the fall, will they have like someone doing plants? In, in, the, in the past, there's been at different places. That's around. the next week. Yeah, that's the next week. So, uh, the okay, next there was week. Someone selling start, okay, so, what, what we do is, and we arrange this uh, sequentially on purpose, any kind of pots and uh, garden pots that we collect on the 6th, we hold, uh, we store for a week at Smith Vogue, and then we pull them out and we have them oh, to start nice. our garden pot swap uh, on the 13th. And so that, John said, is a very simple thing. He doesn't think he needs a whole lot of Two organization. People. People if, and he was asking if, Roger, if you were available if, because you'd if, helped in the past. If I'm off, I'm, I'm there. If you're off, you're there. Okay. Yeah. So he, I mean, he would like one other person, but other than that, he's got that down. So, um, and that is our, that's it for the, the summer portion of our pop-up events. I have a hazardous waste collection on the 20th of May, and we talked about doing a potential repair cafe on the, on June, in early June. And so that's something that I wanted to 
talk about to see what the um, take a temperature reading on on whether you think that we should go ahead and proceed with something in June or not. Yeah, until we get enough volunteers mm -hmm. to do it, which we don't have. I, I think we you mean the repair people. The repair, repair people. people. So, right. well, let, let's talk about that a little bit because I, I think I volunteered to try and uh, enlist those people. But if you have ideas for people that I should call the side stand, um, or in addition to the stand, I should well, say. Well, and I have a list of people who've already volunteered to oh, help. Great. Oh. So we have, I mean, so my, I went to this event on, um, and actually John mm -hmm. was there too, but John was there when nobody was there. <laughs> we had very, very poor turnout to this event, which to me communicates the importance of getting the word out. Mm -hmm. um, this fellow had had some success in Greenfield and he, his vision is to have events, you're welcome to, have events in um, each of the three counties. So he wants to do one in Franklin County, one in Hampshire County, and one in Hamden County. He lives in Hamden County. Um, the bar in Amherst had invited him to come so he's He's very happy to continue with that arrangement in Amherst and has no desire to have anything in Northampton. Mm -hmm. So he was very enthusiastic about us getting involved and is happy to talk. He has a bunch of uh, acquaintances mostly uh, of fixers that are just fixers. He has an IT background and he has a bunch of friends. He, he also worked on a farm for a while fixing machinery. So he, had, he just knows this kind of community of people who are really handy people. And that's who he has that comes to these events. And there was one person he knew through, his, through school and he brought his dad who's also really handy. So mm -hmm. um, they aren't necessarily professional people but they just are very handy people. And um, I think we had five, the most we had was five, uh, experts, fixers, and I think we had maybe seven customers for mm. the whole three or four hour period. So it was really, really light. Now it was a beautiful day, and I don't really know how well advertised it was. And so that's one of the benefits that, are, that we have, one of the advantages we have is that we have between our Facebook page and people knowing about us um, and and expecting that we're going to be doing something like this because we've been talking about it and it is on our slate of events. I also am going to take this opportunity to show you the wonderful ad that Diana has designed that's going to be on the back of the Reduce, Reuse, Recycle insert. Um, this is the almost final version. Insert to what? To the, uh, to the newspaper. Oh, all, the news, all the local newspapers. Oh, so this is going to go on the back and the uh, September repair event is on here. We did not put the June event okay. on here um, because we it wasn't set in stone. But we certainly, you know, one of the things that, that somebody had suggested was, well, what if we just do a repair light event? Yeah, soft um, open. Absolutely, you know, just so to yeah, work out the We case. talked about sure. maybe doing it, you know, at a neighborhood, for a neighborhood or for, or just, just kind of seeing what kind of, um, what kind of activity we can get if we did a press release and put it out there sure. that we're going to try this and, and um, so the, the question is should we do we want to go ahead and galvanize and do that for June and so if we have well, yeah. all we really need is what two or three fixtures right to show up um, I can get that then it might start. be worth finding out when the base state neighborhood tax yeah. sale is going to be right because uh, it could be on the same day and then you have built-in uh, hundreds of people coming. Uh, that might be the day to do it. I, I mean, Bay State is great because there's just a lot of uh, information exchange in the neighborhood. Uh, their listserv is one of the newer ones in the city, but it's it's well subscribed to, mm -hmm. and uh, and they get a lot of people for their events. So, but where uh, do they do it? Where? Yeah. Where? Well. You know the original recycling event was at Bay State, and we did in the parking lot of uh, the Cutlery Building. Because yeah. uh, you need a place. I have yeah, I have Smith Folk. Smith Folk has been yeah. reserved. Right. So That's we not have that far. Yeah. we have it. Okay. Um, we have you know we could easily have it there. But it's if you wanted to do a neighborhood one, we could ask um, Fiker School, our Leslie. volunteer Leslie, 
about using the Fiker School. They have a great room right on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. That actually, the original toy exchange was in the Fiker School. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. well, six or seven years ago. I mean, it's not that far from Bay State. Right. Well, it's not well, far. Smithville's not that it's far. It's not. Yeah. Right. And maybe there's some way, you know, oh, advertising got, got at the I tag think it's, sales. it's easier. It's better for public uh, awareness just to have it at the same place. Uh, it's it's le there's less communication that has to happen, and people will assume because of all of our other events being there that it's going to be there. So I would advocate that, but I'm very flexible. I guess the most important thing is that the group agree that this is something that we want to try to make happen, that we will make happen for June, however, whatever form it takes. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm in for that. I I have a cold and I have some hesitation, mm -hmm. but um. Some uh, congestion and we, some hesitation. Yes, if, we mm -hmm. have, um, if we have the, the repairs, that, that's the most critical thing, mm -hmm. I think. And I think we can work out the logistics of it. Let, let me just be the devil's advocate for a second, you know, because we, we've always been sensitive to uh, cannibalizing our volunteer pool uh, from the recenter. And uh, while I would love to get this started as soon as possible, we don't do winter events other than the toy exchange. It's, this is an indoor event, I assume. Should we be doing our repair cafes in the winter? We do it in the, we do, we have one in September. Right, that's not the winter and that will still cannibalize yep. the volunteer pool from the recent. Uh -huh. So the, we're uh -huh. doing afternoon instead of morning. Oh, we are? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it is afternoon yeah. and I, oh, uh, I also, I spoke to the people in Pittsfield um, mm -hmm. I, for some length of time and she said that they do find, they do it all through the summer, but she said they, they do find that the days that are better days, that are beautiful and not too hot, et cetera, are it, the, the traffic is much, much lighter. Sure. Mm -hmm. So she said, you know, when, um, mm -hmm. rainy, crappy, whatever days, they get re they're really busy. And my experience in Amherst, because I volunteered there the whole, the whole day on Sunday in Amherst, um, was the same. It was a gorgeous day mm -hmm. and people just didn't come out. Now, how much of that was that people didn't know about it and how much of it was the, the So what you're day? saying is that the winter would be the great time because that's terrible weather and people are going to want to be indoors. That is that, yes, potentially. However, that doesn't mean that people don't have needs later, you know, uh, at other times. So do we do we try to do something in June even though it might be beautiful weather just to, to I think as in the TM that reading? solves all my issues. I think mm -hmm. that's great. That's terrific. In, in the PM? Okay. So, so should we have a vote or it does ever, it, it, is anyone feeling that it's not a good idea? I think we should try. I think it's like advertising for ones that might end up being in the winter. I mean, yeah. You know, sure. we, this is a celebrity event. If the, if the repairs are available on that date in the afternoon, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So I was able to, um, the, because the reporter was there, I took the opportunity to put a pitch in, um, and where did it go? It's towards the end of the article. They said the one yeah, about June, the they didn't the get a date, but they said it's sometime It's a small in June. ending. It's a small ending on B2. There you go. Okay. Similar events are scheduled throughout the region on April 15th. The Pittsfield Repair Cafe will host an event at da 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 da. The Northampton Department of Public Works is also planning events in June and September, though no dates are official. Well, that's not what I told him. Anyway, so so he put that out there, and and I know from the Facebook activity that there's a lot of interest in it. So let's see what we can do. The, the biggest hazard is getting people so excited that we have more stuff that needs to be fixed than we have fixers. That's that's because we don't want to discourage or disappoint people. So that would be, to me, the biggest risk. Can I say one thing, and maybe I'll talk with Roger about it later. I was going to work on finding, um, like going to the um, hardware store and maybe getting a sponsor. I had a very interesting conversation with the owner there, and I was explaining the concept, and she said, oh, is that like things like fixing lamps? And I said, yes. And she said, well, that would be, you know, in conflict with us because we fix lamps. So. I thought that was, I mean, we talked a little that? bit. Florence? Carol. No, not Florence. Um, Foster Farrar. Do Carol they fix lamps? Lamp. Well, that's exactly my reaction. I've known them since they were downtown Northampton. I know they fix screens because I've gotten screens there. So I'm thinking, I mean, I talked a bit more to her, but 
I mean, this is, we're not like only having people try to do it themselves. We don't want it thrown away. And, and we so want it to works educate together. people so that they know that things sh could be fixed, so that right. they think of that before they throw it away. So that, I kind of think, oh, I mean, I didn't know they fixed that. What else, other things do they do? And that's the kind of maybe the word to get out. Because again, I, I, I felt, and if it sounds like I'm right, it's to not have things go into the landfill, not necessarily make us all do it ourselves. Well, and I think building the awareness of mm -hmm. fixing is mm -hmm. going to help them. Mm. Because I know, well, not everybody like, wants to bring yeah, it to knows? us, and not every. Isn't that? Yeah. They also yeah. sell the parts that you need. To yeah. 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 So one of the no, things. I was fast. I didn't know. That, that was short sighted. I think it was short sighted. Approach. Well, we had a. Sh well, I'm going back because. Okay. Well, I also approached uh, Florence Hardware, and the owner wasn't in, but the son was mm -hmm. really interested. Oh, it, good. The idea was well, at the uh, repair public thing, they have an, a good idea where they give the uh, the. Uh, Participant, the people who brings the stuff in, a uh, homework sheet. So if they need supplies, you know, they write the supplies on the sheet and they bring it to the hardware store. The hardware store could give a discount. They give a 10% discount, so you would end up going to their store. And meanwhile, in uh, exchange for giving a discount, they would get some advertising. Mm -hmm. And That's all right. the all the repairs get to put their their business cards out, and we can make a a poster. But these are repairs, and these are their businesses. Nobody knew. Who knows? Who knew that Foster that uh, Foster Park I, I was yeah. So that gets right. advertised. Yeah. So when people yeah. um, said, so when what? people bring yeah. it to the I repair cafe it. and there isn't time to fix it, what are they bring right. it? All right. Can I can I say we have two months until the repair cafe until our soft open? What needs to get done in order to be so? Prepared? I'm going to propose that we <clears> get together next week. I'll send out a doodle today to the people who are have already self-identified as being interested to make this happen, and we're going to get our resources together and find. Uh, we're going to uh, corral the corral the things that we, the cows that we already have and figure out which ones are still loose. Does that sound good? Get the braids together. Okay. I'd love to go. Okay. Excellent. John, I just uh, we flew past it. Um, the rally. Uh huh. Uh, in my experience with the last few I've attended, there's somewhat of a moving target of what we can and can't accept. I know all of a sudden one year was a big surprise that we weren't supposed to be taking car seats, but not all the volunteers knew that. Um, and then there was an issue with the crinkly plastic, which I guess expanded to any black plastic that wasn't of a substantial thickness. And uh, I guess just for the sake of whoever is working there, if that could be maybe refined a little bit and so that all the volunteers know and are on the same page and not different people telling different, you know. Like a mini training. Something, yeah. just so that everyone's on the same page and it's a consistent <laughs> message and just. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the head intake person at those events and you're right, John, I had no idea about those things. So You didn't know about the, the car seats? Uh, I, I, I told him. Yeah. <laughs> After you told me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And this, year, all, the, this yeah. year there's the size issue that we didn't really know about. Right. I, I, I still don't understand the car seats yeah. because it's rigid plastic. Yeah. We it, used to it cut was, out, We used to cut uh, the belts. I pushed back many times on that car seat issue, David, um, with the people at the MRF, and I said we used to take them. We always cut off the pa the stuff. It's never been a problem. And she said no car seats. Okay. That's why, the decision they have made. You know, that's the decision they have made. She said that there's too many of them that are not suitable, and so and they it's just they've just their their rule is no car seats now. Mm -hmm. If we want it, if that needs to be changed, it's it's something beyond our, you know, um, it's it's a different issue than what we have to be sure. We have to ensure that the stream that they get from us is what they want. And right now, it's no car seats. I, I get it, but they have to be better about being clear about what it is. That, I mean, if they say rigid plastics, if that's what this event is, and car seats are made out of rigid plastic, we need to at least understand why that's, mm -hmm. so that we can... Explain. Educate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to go, so I'll see you. Okay. Thanks, Roger. Okay, thanks, Roger. So I just have, a, uh, can we... You go ahead. Um, I will, I have, I have duly noted, I will make an effort to That's make sure idea, that Tom. all of the uh, <coughs> bulky rigid people are more aware of what can and can't be taken. We have a similar issue with the foam because I understand some of the softer foam is now acceptable. So we'll... Is we'll acceptable. 
it, supposedly, I have to check into that. <laughs> and then um, and the same thing about a consistent message. Um, uh -huh. Did this get printed yet? Yeah. Okay. What does it say? Well, I was just curious because I had always been told, just internally and from the DPW people, on the Glendale Road free recycling, on the fee-based disposal, this is electronics pretty much any electronic that's mostly metal can go in the metal recycling bin for free. That's what I've been told, and even but, the attendants yes. have told me that. Some mm -hmm. have, so, but there are some that do not, like flat screens have a certain Well, I understand amount. that. Yeah, so we can't, we can't make a blank statement okay. like that, because better okay. that they think that there's a fee and then find out it's free than okay. the other way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, quick note, free from electronics recycling at People's Bank on King Street from 1.30 to 3.30 on the Earth Day, Saturday the 22nd p.m. And any time it's staples, right? Up to seven items, I think, it's staples? Really? They don't take everything. They just take computers, I think. Okay. Uh, I don't think that they take... Um, I could be wrong. That was best. what Best Buy did, and Best Buy um, yeah. now charges, right. they, unfortunately. So yeah, you said that was the 22nd? 22nd, 130 to people's bank. Bank. Street. TVs, everything. Which people's bank? The, the one, the on, one King on King Street. Street. The only one in Northampton. I just wanted to let you know that the final uh, Earth Day insert is going to be going into the Northampton Gazette, I think, on Tuesday of next week. And then it's uh, it's also going out in the recorder on Tuesday. And then it's going to be in the Amherst Bulletin on Thursday or Friday of next week. And this is what it looks like, and its theme is uh, compost and wasted food. And Diana's fabulous advertisement is on the back, and uh, we will have extra copies here available, so let people know. And uh, the other thing, um, let's see, so uh, we ha then our final, our next meeting is, well, May 11. any other new business, I guess? Oh, one, right. <clears throat> if you want to see the future, as far as construction is concerned, go look at Russian and then in quotes, 3D printed house. It'll blow your mind. <clears throat> it's, uh, I don't know what they call it, printing. Mm -hmm. It's forming a house. They, they built a house in Russia. Um, I forgot the name of them. Air, Airbus, Orbis or something. It's a San Francisco company. The house, a 400 square foot house in one day, and it's formed. I mean, it's, this is the future, <laughs> folks. Um, is there a uh, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Yes. Second. All right. Thank you.